Hello everybody, this is Daliana. There are so many tutorials, new techniques every day, and as a new data scientist, it can be very overwhelming to decide what should you study. Today, I'm going to provide three pro tips and save you a lot of time. I know you probably signed up for 10 Coursera courses or a certificate. The first advice is put them aside. What, do, what should we do instead? Log into Indeed or LinkedIn. Look at the job description of data scientists first. You need to start thinking backwards to see what does the market want instead of what you think is important or how the uh, course certificates marketers tell you what is important, right? And when you go into the job descriptions of data scientists, it can also be a little bit confusing because data science is a very broad term these days. And if you look a little bit, you will see there are generally three types of data scientists. So the first one is analytics, metric analytics. It will require you to do um, some deep dive if business metrics go up or go down. Um, it might also require you to build some automated reporting. So this is kind of like you need to understand basic statistics, but also need to have the skill set to automate report. SQL is very important, and then it might need to use some Python, but for some jobs, you, you might not need to use Python or R. So it really depends on um, different jobs. And for this type of jobs, they want you to have the mindset, like a product manager, for example. It's this type of description is very typical for Facebook data scientists. So this is the first one, um, focusing on metrics and product analytics. And the second one, um, you can see some of them are called machine learning uh, engineer. Some of them are more research focused, uh, called applied scientist or machine learning scientist, machine learning specialist. So for this type of data scientist, uh, generally requires a degree, a master degree or a PhD, and uh, you have to understand all those machine learning technologies. You have to be proficient in at least one programming language. Some of them even ask you to have experience in say, a C or Java. But even within this category, some type of machine learning data scientists only require you to know the application of machine learning. So you don't really have to uh, create new algorithms. And the third one is data science generalist. So you need to basically have all the toolbox from the first two type of data scientists and then assess the situation, decide what type of tool you want to use to solve a business problem. So this one usually requires you to have a broad set of skills and you don't have to be really deep in any type of skill. But still, you still have to have a strong foundation of basic statistics, um, basic machine learning models, you need to write some SQL to retrieve data um, and to do some data processing modeling in R or Python. So now you uh, see all three types of data scientists and then you can ask yourself, what type of data scientist do you want to be? What are you interested in? And also you need to assess, uh, be realistic, which one fits your background better, right? So. For example, maybe you're interested in machine learning, but your previous coursework mostly focusing on statistical testing. So maybe if you really need to find a job fast, you can start with the one that suits your interest better. And then if you're in a company, maybe you can switch to a different type of job family or have more experiences um, or gain some machine learning experience once you're hired. So you need to um, know what you want and also know what you can offer for this job and then um, pick a data science category that works for you. So now you know what type of data science, scientist job you want so you need to focus on this specific category. For example, you are interested in product analytics, um, metric, deep dive, uh, report building and then you collect a this type of data science job descriptions, say 10 of them, and then you go to the required section of the job description. You don't really need to the 
you know, the section when you say, oh, it would be better if you know what is that. That means it's important, but it's not the most important thing. And for you to prepare to study, it's not going to be your uh, priority. So you go to those required section and then copy paste all those uh, bullet points and now you compile list that is going to be the list of what you want to study See now you have this list and then if you compare this list to all the certificate the courses you sign up. It can be very different so Basically what I want you to do is to dive in the real-world job market as soon as possible even if you're just um, a junior year in college uh, you even haven't got internship yet but it's better if you really know um, what what the reality wants. So now you have done the job search part. What is the second half? So the second tip is how do you prioritize now you have this list? They can still be a big list. And then if you don't have enough time, um, which one do you prioritize? So the second tip is try to think like a hiring manager. If you are a manager on this team, what type of person do you want to hire? And if you are watching this video, I assume you are a new data scientist or you are a student. So imagine if you want to hire someone new on this team, you probably don't expect this person to have all those advanced skills. It would be nice if you do, but the most important skill would be your foundational skills. I know everybody will sometimes when we see uh, people post some new techniques on social media and make us feel a little insecure or uh, anxious. Oh, I don't know everything. Exactly. I still don't know everything. Data science is such a, a fast moving industry. The most important thing isn't about knowing anything. It's about learning something new on the job fast. And how do you demonstrate this? Uh, ability. You can show your manager that you have the potential by demonstrating a very solid foundation. So when you look at this list, you can ask yourself, what is the top five skills that you can learn or you can master today that will make the rest of the skills very easy to acquire? So what are the basic of the basic skills? That's what you want to focus. I know we all want to learn something new. We see someone post a, a tutorial about self-driving car or robotics or a blockchain, we want to learn that. But we need to be more mindful, more intentional about what we want to learn because we only have limited of time. So you have to be able to say no to the things that are not on your priority list so you have enough time to study for the things that's actually important for you. So once you identify the foundational list, um, you need to really stick to that. Um, I can give you a few examples, but um, this might not be a thorough list. You have to do your own research. For example, if you're interested in product analytics, then you need to be very familiar with um, statistical testing, for example, t-test, um, what are the um, assumptions of t-test, how do you handle outliers? Uh, what is the p-value? And uh, you also need to understand how product manager thinks. Some, um, some books people recommend is about this topic. It's called Cracking the PM in Product Manager Interview. And if you're interested in uh, machine learning, you need to think about the machine learning entire workflow from data collection, um, data pre-processing, feature engineering, how do you select models? How do you tune the models? And more, also another thing that's very important, how do you evaluate the models? Because nowadays, create a model, you just call one line of code. It's very easy. But how do you evaluate in a business scenario, whether it works, whether the risk can be very important. So have that mindset of critical thinking is um, also shows that you have uh, the potential of grow to a more senior data scientist on the team. And uh, I have a funny name for the list of foundational knowledge. So sometimes if you are hesitating, should this technique go into my study list, you can ask yourself. Um, if you 
if somebody asks you this question during an interview and you can't answer that, is it all right? Because it's known, it's an a advanced concept. For example, if somebody asks you um, advanced image processing techniques, um, it's okay if you don't know. But if somebody asks you, uh, what is a re linear regression? What's the difference between linear regression and logistic regression? I might feel a little bit uh, ashamed if, I, if as a data scientist, I don't know that. So you can, if you, you can use this trick to decide which goes into your list. And I call it a shame list. Of course, uh, our learning motivation shouldn't be driven by shame. But uh, this can be a he helpful technique to help you identify what are the things you have to learn in order to call yourself a data scientist? In order to uh, not be ashamed. So now you understand what are the real world the market one, and you consolidate the list uh, into the foundations. And what's the third thing? You need to get real life feedback constantly. So although uh, you got this list from real job postings, but still your understanding of what the job want might be different from a hiring manager. So you need to reach out to real people. So some people you can reach out to are your peers. If they already work as data scientists, you can ask them to help you review this list, to ask them what are the common things they use at work. And uh, if you um, use LinkedIn, I strongly recommend you use LinkedIn. You can activate a premium function. I think it's free for a month. You can reach out to recruiters. Doesn't matter if you don't know them. Send them your resume, ask them what they think, and if they're nice, it's possible they don't get back to you, but just try it. What if they do, and then you get a free real-world feedback from recruiters on what skills are you lacking, what do they think of the thing you need to study, and at the same time, although I know you're not ready, try to apply for a few jobs. And this is so important because during this phase, you're probably going to get a lot of rejection. And instead of feeling frustrated about the rejection, you need to tell yourself this is a great learning opportunity. What does rejection do is they help you correct your uh, learning list and put you on the right track so your skills can be more aligned to the real world job market. So this is exactly what algorithms do, right? They um, constantly get feedback, they tune their models, um, update their parameters so they can achieve higher and higher accuracy. So don't just put your head down study for like three months and then realize, oh, this is not what I'm interested in. The market, this is not what the market need. Um, get feedback at least every other week. Um, talk to some friends or even some other friends who are preparing for the same type of data scientist role you are interested in. You can at least compare notes. What I'm saying is don't just study on your own. Don't put yourself in a silo. I know it's important to stay focused. When I say focus, it's to focus on the very important foundational knowledge, the, the shame list that if you miss that, you know, it's embarrassing type of knowledge you have to know, but constantly get feedback and tune your list. So now if you follow this three pro tips that will save you at least 50% of time and help you get a data science job faster. Thanks for watching.